Hello guys, welcome to this lesson. We are definitely doing Euclidean geometry in this lesson. And I believe that you're ready. You've got your pen and paper or something to write with or write on. And uh, we have this question here on the board. So, you know, Euclidean geometry is about reading the mathematics in words, transferring it in diagram, seeing the connections, and then getting into the solution. Okay, that is the roadmap definitely that you want to take. So let's read. In the diagram below, triangle ABC is drawn in the circle. TA and TB are tangents to the circle. The straight line THK is parallel to AC with H on BA and K on BC. AK is drawn. Left angle A3 equal to X. Okay. We look for keywords, we now want to create connections. Okay, so there's a triangle. Good, A, B, C, there, you see it. Okay, and then T, A and T, B are what? Tangents. And that helps us to recall what? The tangents from the same point theorem or the 10 chord theorem. Okay, so it means either one of the two or both will be needed in our solution, okay? The straight line THK, in other words, THK are collinear points. They lie on the same line, okay? The straight line THK is parallel to what? AC, and there we see it. THK is parallel to AC, and when you have parallel lines, we're talking about alternate angles, corresponding angles, and cointerior angles. At least one of those three or a combination which can be present in the diagram. Okay, so it is parallel to AC with H on BA and K on BC. Okay, AK is drawn and left angle A3 is equal to X. There is it. Okay, so what are we going to do from the words moving to the diagram and we investigate what's going on parallel lines we know that this k2 will be called to angle a1 alternate angles because of parallel lines okay and k1 and k2 plus angle c will be your cointerior angles they are supplementary Okay, and what can we say about this one? K3 and angle C. What can you say about them? Yes, I hear corresponding angles. Good. And tangents now. Okay, there are two tangents, TA and TB. There we are. So we know the theorem says tangents from the same point or a common point are equal. So this is equal to that, creating for us what? Equal base angles, angles opposite equal sides, okay? Meaning angle A3 equal to angle B2. What else can we pick up? Uh, that uh, is sufficient. Okay, we do not make the assumption that there's a center somewhere. Nothing in the question is telling us that. And yeah, let's start. We get the very first question. Prove that angle K3 is equal to X. Okay, where are we? Angle K3 is related to C. And C, how is it, how is it related to X? Now, look at this. Ang angle X is there. It's an angle between the tangent and the chord BA. And the chord BA subtends an angle at C. Okay, so from A3 we move on to C, and then from C we move on to K3. And that is the road map. Okay, so we know that angle A3 is equal to X. This is given. Okay, however, angle AC, sorry, angle C is equal to angle. A3 is also equal to X, but this is by the 10 chord theorem. Okay, but C is equal to angle K3 by what? Corresponding angles since there are two 
parallel lines here, THK and AC. Okay, so we have the fact that angle C is equal to angle 3, it will make it equal to X as well, because THK is parallel to AC. However, we need to first indicate the type of angles that are formed by these lines of which we are using. Okay, sorry about that. Because they are what? Corresponding angles and THK is parallel to AC. Okay, and that is it. It's enough proof to prove now what we are required to. K3 is equal to X. Good. Now the second question B, prove that AKBT is a cyclic quark. So you go to the set of points here, AKBT, AKBT, prove that it's a cyclic quark. In other words, all these four points might lie, must lie on the circumference of the circle. We don't see the circle that goes through AKBT, we need to produce it. By construction, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, you join the four points. Now, when you do this, you bring out the property that you will need to use to prove that it's a cyclic quark. Already I've shown that this is X. This is also X. And BT, if you take it as the reference chord, okay, it subtends an angle X. And BT subtends an angle X, both at the circumference of this circle that we're about to talk about. Okay, so what can you say about this? These are angles in the same segment. We're done. Okay, so we know that angle K3 is equal to X and this was proven in the previous question. Okay, and therefore angle A3 is equal to angle K3. They're both equal to X. Okay, so therefore since we have angles in the same segment, however, since we are proving that something is a cyclic quark, we are using the converse of that theorem. Okay, so we have, therefore, A, K, B, T is a cyclic quark. So as I said, we cannot say angles in the same segment because we do not start with a cyclic quark to prove that it is a cyclic quark. So by the converse of angles in the same segment, it means that it's only possible when you have a cyclic quark. So by converse of angles in the same segment. Okay. Yeah. So this was a straightforward question. And I believe that, you know, it is crystal clear to you as to what is going on. You read the words. Maths in words, transfer it into the diagram, create a picture, you know, draw in your arrows if you want. And from these connections that you are sure of, then you move to the solutions. All right. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Shop, shop.